Everybody, welcome back. As you know, I am not much of an unboxing type of person unless it's something that really speaks to me and I feel that would be interesting to you. And back, I want to say in March, I did an unboxing for a company called The Moonbox. And Moonbox is a monthly subscription company that does pagan supplies. And being a person who comes from a disposition who is naturally very nervous, I suffer from anxiety, I have panic disorder, I have panic attacks, and occult shops have always provided a sense of peace for me. There's something about each and every one of them that have this telltale smell that instantly puts you at ease. I loved going through the books, I loved going through the crystals, everything they had to offer. The overall mentality of the people that would frequent these places were just a sense of peace for me. So it does hold a very sacred, special place for me now. When it comes to religion, I make no sense because I don't subscribe to any sort of religion at all. I was raised Roman Catholic, I made my communion, but by the time I got old enough to, say, make decisions for myself, where I was supposed to make my confirmation when I turned 15, I shut that right down. I wanted nothing to do with it. I did not believe in Catholicism, Christianity, none of it. So I'm not a religious person, but I am spiritual. So I'm still sort of trying to find myself. I guess you would call me a spiritual agnostic if you were to sort of put me in any category. What I wanted to talk about is something that happened with the moon box. So June 3rd, 2000, my father passed away. He died suddenly in his sleep. We found him dead in the morning. It was a messed up situation. And I think I'm gonna get into that whole story at some point, but not in this video. So June 3rd is a pretty big day for my family. Um, the moon box I had stored beneath my altar, which is right here. And just underneath is a little space where you can store things, and that's where I kept the moon box. Coming within like about five feet of my altar, you can smell the varying scents that come along with it. I have herbs, I have sage, I have uh, varying types of incense, neck champ being my favorite. I have candles, there are varying smells, but I'm familiar with those smells because they've, you know, it's just been something that's been in my home for ages. So come June 3rd, all of a sudden, my whole apartment, whole apartment smells incredibly strongly of Old Spice cologne, which was my father's cologne. That's what he wore for as long as I remember since I was born. So this is a smell that is very indicative of my father that is very associated with my father and my sister who's been living here with me. She and I were going through my house like a lunatic, looking for the source of the smell because it was creepy as hell. So the day of my father's passing, why does all of a sudden my apartment reek of his cologne like this? We were looking everywhere, and I mean everywhere, and we could not find the source of the smell until we went over to my altar and happened to pick up the moon box. That's where the scent was coming from. I opened it up. Now this moon box that I've never smelled like this before because I've opened it, I've done the unboxing, I actually have opened it and used things inside before, put them on top of my altar. It's never smelled like this. It's never once smelled like Old Spice. Why all of a sudden is the strong scent of my father coming from this box? None of us could explain it. We had no idea. And I decided I wanted to email the company and, and tell them what happened. And I explained to them who I was, that I did an unboxing for them ages ago, and that for whatever reason, the moon box, the day of my father's passing and the anniversary of his death began reeking of his cologne so much that it made my whole apartment smell of it and my husband wonder who the hell was in our house. I received a response and they were intrigued to hear about my story and because of it, it was very ironic, call it fate, who knows, the next month was going to be the witch's veil which has to do with the veil um close to halloween becomes thin enough that we can communicate with our ancestors who've passed and they decided that they thought it would be a great idea to send me another box considering that my father for whatever reason was trying to communicate with me through my stuff and let's figure out why they sent it to me for free and i thought why not do an unboxing on my channel and just show you what's inside the box because i really do love these boxes as you can see. <laughs> so it comes with this telling you exactly what's inside and this beautiful card that was inside as well. 
I love the print. I'm going to display it, not sure where, but I want to read to you what's in the back. This is the Eye of Horus. The Eye of Horus brings divine perception, protection, and insight. You are gifted with certain spiritual abilities, including divine sight, that are awakening and growing now. You have much divine support and protection so that you may grow your abilities and serve others with your divine gifts. Trust your perception and know that you are divinely protected. And I'll read to you, it's in the box in a moment, but we'll have a look through. And it has this beautiful print as well. This saw one on it. If you're wondering why there was a weird jump, I kept trying to read it and screwing up horribly and I didn't want to do this any sort of injustice, but here we go. I should probably add that the box smells absolutely gorgeous, so. And it was packaged much nicer until I decided to go through it prior to making the video and, you know, started rummaging like an idiot. But I was really excited, I couldn't help myself. So. Really quickly, I'm gonna go through what's in the box so I vaguely know what I'm telling you. The magical items in this box are as follows. So we have a cast iron cauldron. Let's find that. I was wondering why this box was so heavy. I think it is, yeah, it is the cauldron. Oh wow, check that out. It is heavy duty. So we have a cast iron cauldron. So I'm gonna put this here. I'm really excited to set up my altar now. Next we have a set of charcoal discs. It's like a scavenger hunt, really. <laughs> These boxes are really interesting because I remember from the last time, there was a lot more in the box that appeared to be in there because the more you dug, the more things you found. It's like, when does it end? Here we have Three Kings Charcoal. And let's just see what this does. We've included our favorite brand of charcoal discs. Remove the disc from the sealed roll and set in your cauldron or offering bowl. We recommend placing on black sand so that the heat does not transfer through your cauldron, making it unpleasantly hot. Place the flame on one end of the disc until it starts to spark. Ooh, that's gonna be fun. The disc will light all the way through on its own once the spark has started. Let your charcoal light completely before adding the herbs or resin. Very cool. Next we have black ritual sand. I'm getting really excited at the things that I'm coming across. Wait, I think I have it. Okay. Okay, here we go. Black Ritual Sand. I hope nothing loses the smell. Next is Frankincense Resin, and it probably comes with... No, it doesn't. Frankincense Resin. Bubble wrap is deceptively strong. <laughs> is That's not it, is it? It does not wish to be found. Here we go. Frankincense resin. Next, we have copal resin. What is copal resin? Copal is considered to be sacred food of the gods. Copal, like frankincense, is burned for purification and healing energies. Copal is also used to uplift spirits and create a welcoming environment for you to connect with your spirit guides and ancestors. You'll see through these items that we focus on inviting productive energies into our space for healing, guidance, and answers. Ruminate resin. I just saw that. Oh, yeah. Ruminate resin. So what does ruminate resin do? Let's find out. Ruminate resin is used for deep meditation during any ritual. We also recommend that you use this while you're using your sacred salt as it can help you seep deeper into the energies that you've created around you. When you're working to connect with your ancestors, being completely relaxed and almost in a trance state is necessary. It's really hard for me. I've tried meditation. I don't know if any of you have issues doing it, but I've often tried meditation and it's so difficult for me. I've never been able to successfully do it and I think it has to do with my anxiety and my inability to sort of shut my brain off and I'm so envious of people who are able to do that but my brain is just constantly going and I, I, I at night time actually I need to sleep with Netflix on and one earbud in because I simply I can't shut my brain off and I need to hear something to sort of drown out my thoughts so so what do we have next Yerba Santa Sage among other attributes, Yerba Santa is a powerful holy herb that is used in many divination and ancestral rituals. Yerba Santa is used in a dream work when trying to connect with loved ones that have passed. Use Yerba Santa before your ritual and after your ritual to dispel hostile spirits and invoke insight. 
while reading tarot or oracle cards. The Crone Magical Oil We view the crone as the women of wisdom. The crone goddess is the seer and the healer whose knowledge is sought out to guide others during life's hardships and transitions. We've enchanted and blessed this oil to enhance psychic powers and attract wisdom from those older and much more experienced. Whether in this world or the world beyond the veil, the magical oil was created with mugwort and juniper berry, along with a mixture of magical oils and essential oils. We have charged this oil with clear quartz and have blessed its contents under the moon. Use this oil to anoint your candles, jewelry, and skin. Okay, let's find this. Is this it? Oh, it is. It's the one I took out earlier. almost a citrusy smell to it. This is pretty. This is gonna go here. NWT Sacred Salt. NWT is the Egyptian goddess of the sky. NWT is shown as a woman or a cow with black or midnight blue skin covered with stars. This symbol was placed in tombs to protect the deceased and to invoke and aid in the deity of the dead. We've included myrrh, essential oils, passionflower herb, vanilla, and a mixture of our magical oils into the sacred salt. We call upon NWT while we bathe before our ritual to assist us in calling upon our ancestors and protecting them as we receive messages and guidance. Oh yeah, so you can see black with the stars on it. You can smell the vanilla right away. I'm very weird with smells and scents. I don't know if you noticed. Oh no, don't fall. Oh no, you don't fall either. We have rough labradorite. Labradorite is a powerful wind element stone used for magic, spirit communication, and divination. The stone activates the inner eye, allowing one to more clearly envision the messages coming through readings or meditation. Despite its dark outer appearance, it holds a rainbow of brilliant hues visible only when the stone is held in light. This effect can mirror energy, which enables one to move through unseen realms while purifying one's energies in the light. Affirmation, I call forth the magic of high awareness and request guidance from my ancestors and guides. So let's find this uh, rough labradorite. I couldn't wait to open this bag. Doesn't say if this is it, but I'm, I'm assuming. I think it's the only stone here, but let's hold it up in the light and see. So this is the first time I've ever held rough labradorite. into your pretty blue velvet bag. Next we have the altar broom. And the altar broom is used sweeper of energy. So before your ritual, you're gonna use your broom to push out old energies, allowing for a renewed sacred space. Put that right here. No, not there. Dragon's blood incense. Dragon's blood is used for protection, strength, and extra energy or power when added into a ritual. Burn dragon's blood incense when working to increase courage and strength. Just a little bit. Oh, wow. Do you ever smell something? I don't know if you've ever done this, but I have a very strong sense of smell and I'm very sensitive to smells. But did you ever smell something that you just sort of smell and you're like, oh, wow. And it kind of, you feel it. I want to reorder them because this is the most enchanting smell. I believe this is probably what the whole box smells like. You need to try these. I'm gonna light these. The Ancestral Calling Spell Candle and Mantra. So the candle, we have a candle here, it comes with a mantra. I wanna actually, if I'm gonna do something, I want to put all my thought and effort into it as opposed to just sort of reading it all willy-nilly. But as you can see, it's a really nice beeswax candle. I love beeswax candles. And here's the mantra. Ancestral calling. I will read it, I promise. Should I put this here? Not yet. Here. I like that. The Crone Magical Oil. The Crone Magical Oil. We view the crone as the women of wisdom. The crone goddess is the seer and the healer 
whose knowledge is sought out to guide others during life's hardships and transitions. We've enchanted and blessed these oils to enhance psychic powers and attract wisdom from those older and more experienced. Wither in this world of world beyond the veil, the magical oil was created with mugwort and juniper berry, along with a mixture of magical oils and essential oils. We have charged this oil with clear quartz and have blessed its contents under the moon. Use this oil to anoint your candles, jewelry, and skin, but be, caref be careful when applying to skin. The base of this oil is sunflower oil, and some may be more sensitive to others with contact skin. Um, yeah, I would just say not to use it on the face. That's just coming from the esthetician side of me. Totemic honoring tea with muslin bag. Breathe in the warm aroma of this beautiful tea blend sitting and saturating in the memories of your loved ones. Resonate with the ideals and wisdom that has been passed down through your bloodline. Take time to honor those that you seek through your ritual work. This caffeine-free tea has been created with silky red rubios, calendula petals, and a dash of cinnamon along with pieces of apple. Place one to two spoonfuls of this tea in your muslin bag, pull close, pull close tightly, and then shut and steep in hot water for three to five minutes. So that would be, we have the muslin bag. And here it is, the totemic tea. I'm not gonna open this up yet and smell it though. I'll put this in the drawer. Certain things I'm gonna put in the drawer to look at later and try and situate. The lavender herb or elf leaf. Lavender is used in healing mixtures carried to see ghosts and warned to protect against the evil eye. Use lavender, placing it under your pillow to enhance the powers of your dreams. Lavender can also be mixed with frankincense to create a beautiful aroma. Gender, masculine, planet, mercury, element, air, powers, love, protection, sleep, chastity, longevity, purification, happiness, and peace. So that would be... Let's see. There. Wormwood herb. Wormwood is burned in incenses to aid in the developing of psychic powers and is also worn for this purpose. Wormwood has been burned to summon spirits and is often mixed with sandalwood for this purpose. If burned in graveyards, the spirits of the dead will rise and speak. Per the old grimoires, I don't know if I pronounced that properly. Gender, masculine, planet, Mars, element, fire, deities, Iris, Diana, and Artemis. So that would be Wormwood. There. Personalized Oracle Reading We have meditated and selected a card from the Isis Oracle by Alana Fairchild to place inside your box. This card and the message that it holds was meant for you. Take the time to reflect on the wisdom that it holds. Let it resonate with you and speak to the, pre the pressing realities in your world. So I wonder if that's this. I'll keep hold of that. We'll, we'll see if actually that's what it is because I don't see anything else in here. Yeah. Okay. So next, parchment paper. We believe that writing down your intentions and goals pushes you further in accomplishing them. We've added a piece of parchment for you to write down your intentions for your ritual so that you may add it to your personal book of shadows. I don't have a book of shadows, but I want one now. Oh, here it is. It's the second piece of parchment. Okay. Samhain Book of Shadows artwork. We have partnered with a very talented local artist to create an exclusive hand-painted piece of artwork to commemorate Samhain. This artwork is a beautiful addition to your Samhain altar to be placed in your Book of Shadows artwork by Adrian Alden. As you perform your ritual, do not set expectations. Cast your attention and be pure of heart and mind. These very personal moments are for you. There is so much knowledge available to you. Take pleasure in knowing that you're becoming one with the earth, the stars, and the universe. Open yourself up to receive these beautiful gifts. We urge you to stay curious and hungry for knowledge. We are set free by a beautiful world around us. We send you love and light as you delve into the comfort of your ancestors receiving messages, insight, and unconditional love. The Moon Box. That's really sweet. I wanted to show you my altar, and right now it's kind of in a little bit of a state of disarray. Uh, obviously because I got new things to put on it and I'm not sure how I want to set it up but I wanted to share it with you nonetheless see this frame 
was a dumpster dive from my apartment complex and I saw it in the dumpster and the superintendent of the apartment complex, he put it in the dumpster probably 20 minutes prior to me spotting it, but that didn't stop me from running in my flip-flops in the rain to jump into the, the dumpster to get it. So it's quite tall. Um, not taller than me, but it doesn't take much to be taller than me. But I thought it would look kind of cool framing the altar. I'd like to hear your thoughts about that. First we have a vintage glass sort of blood red goblet. This came from a good friend of mine that um, she was having a garage sale after her mother had passed away. Her and her brother were selling the family home and I went to the garage sale to help out and she had given me quite a few things and it was very kind of her to give me this. So I thought it would have a really nice place on my altar. This belonged to my Nana and Grandpa and my Nana and Grandpa both passed away. My Grandpa passed away first and my Nana two years later and this was in their home. This came in the last moon box, and I believe it is Sitch, no, selenite. This is made from selenite, and this came from the previous moon box, and it's made from citron, which can be charged on the selenite. Friendship candle came from my best friend, Alexandra, and she gave it to me on my birthday. It says, silence make the real conversations between friends, not the saying, but never the needing to say that it counts is quite sweet and it has a little dream catcher on it but I thought it was very sweet and very sentimental so on my altar it goes I'm not sure how I'm gonna situate this so I'm gonna give you a peek here this is all the stuff that came from the moon box not all of it but maybe you have some ideas on where I should put some of these things this cauldron came with the last moon box and it's really really cute I just, I got really excited when I saw it in the box and I knew I had to have it out and have it displayed. But in it right now is the remnants of the last sage that was burned here. We burn, burn sage here quite a lot. I feel like lighting something up, but lighters and matches are things that go missing quite often in this house. And it's probably because, um, as you can see, I can see there because of the light. And which side is it? Here. I'm not good with not burning myself. Every time I cook, every time I do something that involves heat, I'm always injuring myself. Um, this came from the hot cabbie at work where we keep the hot towels. And then this came from making a barbecue sauce. Just splattered right onto my chest. So yeah, that's basically it. That's my altar. Um, maybe we can get a look in the drawer here. There we go. So inside, more incense that came from my friend Alexandra. Uh, we have a book. Best incense known to man, Nag Champa, my favorite. Well, I am lighting that dragon's blood first chance I get. These butterflies were on the tables at my wedding and I don't know. They're very sentimental to me, so I love them, so they always stay nearby. Wouldn't you know it, more Nag Champa. This is in the 80s. It's my father and I at, I believe, Coney Island. And we went, was it Coney Island? I think we went to Coney Island and we went to the aquarium that day. But yeah, I think that was, let's see. I'm about six or seven, so I, it would be 1986, 1987. It's when I was three. I went through this phase where I always used to do the sleepy pose, and every time somebody would bust out the camera, I would do the sleepy pose, so people thought that that's how the photographer posed me. No. If you see any pictures of me from this period, I'm always doing that. It's my time. My sister and I. I always had awful hair in the 80s. My mother was very much into Joan Jett. That's how she cut my hair. So it permanently did that poofy thing. Not fun. So there you have it, my altar. I hope you enjoyed, and that was also the moon box unboxing. I'm really excited to kind of situate things and get them together, but I have to clean my house first before I'm even gonna be close to doing that. So it's gonna be my inspiration to getting my house clean fast enough so that I'm able to sit down and you know work on my little project here. But I hope you've enjoyed, and thanks for watching. Bye.